rallies of uh, a few days to possibly a week. So this could this could all take uh, anywhere from two to six weeks to play out. So we've really just got to play it as it comes. We'll also find on the small cap stocks that some will get down to their low point fairly quickly. Some could have even reached their low point already. And as I've been writing in the alerts, uh, it's quite normal for gold and gold stocks to basically lead the market down and then lead the market back up again. And we've certainly seen that this time with gold having been uh, quite a bit weaker. You can see here gold basically uh, topped out, started really formed a triple top here in, uh, in November, early December and early January, so over the early part of the last three months, and then started down in, uh, in early January and uh, broke these lows here. So gold has moved down much more quickly than, uh, than the other markets have. And then if we look at somewhere like Newcrest, Newcrest basically formed its high on the 9th of November, so it's really been in decline for quite a bit. Uh, longer, so really the gold stocks started down before the price of gold did, which again is normal, and both of those did before the, the major markets uh, have as well, and I think we'll see the same thing on the rebound. We'll see the gold stocks, first of all the majors, and then the smaller stocks start to tick up. Then we'll see the gold price start to tick up, and uh, and then finally the, um, the indices will, will bottom out. So that's the way that it would normally play out. Uh, let's also have a look at Newmont, which is one of the world's biggest gold miners, just to see if the pattern there is similar to Newcrest. And <clears throat> pretty much indeed it, it is. In fact, Newmont uh, topped out on the 7th of October of last year, uh, formed a couple of lower highs, but basically really started into uh, decline, dropped from 64 down to $55, uh, basically in early December. So these are really the indicators to look for when, when the new months and the new crests of the world start to uh, start to turn up and form new highs, uh, these short-term highs. So basically what I'd be looking for with Newmont would be a close above this level here at about 57.20. So a close above there would indicate that we're on the way to recovery. And shortly after that, you'll find that the... Um, the buying support will start to come back in for the small cap gold stocks. So there'll be uh, there'll be some stocks, as I was saying, will, will uh, bottom out uh, sooner than others. So we've really just got to play it on a case by case basis. Okay, so. Let's have a look at the, uh, the charts that we normally have a look at for the uh, London Metal Exchange copper inventory. And you can see that copper was hitting down in a pretty much a straight line. Um, but we've started to see a bit of a turn up since the middle of December. Um, so we've turned back up towards uh, the 400,000 um, tonne mark. Uh, hasn't really impacted the copper price as yet, but uh, this could lead to a little bit of weakness in copper in the short term. So whilst copper was strong on Friday night, uh, and I believe that the medium to longer term prospects for copper are still extremely strong, in the short term we may see um, we may see a bit of a weakness as a result of this um, these inventory levels kicking up. So there's the copper price, still pretty close to, um, to their all-time highs, but I wouldn't be surprised to see copper pull back to around about this $4 a pound mark. Um, nickel had the inventory levels have started to tick up earlier about the middle of last year but they seem to have plateaued now and uh, we perhaps should see an increase in the nickel price and, and we are so nickel price have paused for a, a, a period when those inventory levels were kicking up but now that they've leveled off again we're now starting to see the nickel price uh, head higher so um, looking for a few nickel alternatives and Perhaps one of the best of them uh, is Western Areas, WSA, from a, from a fundamental point of view. Uh, it's not necessarily now is a good place to enter, but uh, I think in coming weeks we'll probably get a, a very good entry opportunity on, uh, on Western Areas. So let's have a look at the uh, opportunities for this week. 
Um, our short-term strategy is basically any buying we should be doing should only be extreme dips with low ball offers. Um, if you've been following your favourite stocks and you're waiting for them to get a little bit cheaper, then just be patient with it because you might see them quite a bit cheaper. If you want to put some low ball offers in the market, then basically you're looking for uh, a, a dip down to a support level and preferably when the um, RSI level is oversold below 30. Uh, through this period, I think uh, any buying that you do, um, be prepared to take your profits pretty quickly so that you maintain uh, a reasonably reduced exposure just in case this correction turns into something that's a little bit greater than normal. Um, all of the issues that are going on at the moment in the Middle East with, um, uh, with Tunisia and Egypt and the possibility of some of the other Arab countries joining in as well. I don't know that that would be sufficient to trigger anything nasty in the market, but you never know. Certainly could have an impact on oil. Could uh, cause the oil price to uh, to push up. Uh, small cap trades, um, there's really there's no new recommendations at this stage until I see how the market responds over the next couple of days. Um, there is the opportunity for low ball orders, obviously, as the where the focus needs to be. And on the large cap trades, we're really looking at some short selling opportunities on the banks. Let's just have a look at a couple of the bank stocks to show you what I mean. So I'll go through the um, I'll go through the major bank stocks. So this is ANZ first of all, and you can see that it's been largely tracking sideways for some time now. Um, RSI a little bit above the middle point, but really ANZ has not really been showing us any particular strength. The one that really did get oversold is, uh, is CBA. You can see here the RSI has peaked out at above 30. Uh, we've got a bit of a turn down on Friday, uh, fairly large volume on Friday, so I'm really expecting that we will get at least a retracement of this run here from 6th of January to, to now. That should come back probably, I would think, at least to this level here, 5150, and could in fact move all the way back down here to under $50 or even down to the $47 mark, depending on how markets play out. So I think the fact that, um, you know, I, I don't know whether these trades will necessarily uh, work, but at the moment we've got stocks that are over overbought and we're coming into a corrective period in the market. Um, this is pretty high probability kind of places to be, uh, to be taking uh, short sells in my view. Uh, so we'll have a look at NAB. So you can see NAB, somewhat similar to uh, ANZ, didn't ever really get overbought, has been largely tracking sideways, but um, I think there's a bit of an opportunity here with uh, with NAB looking for it to trade this range here between 20, uh, 23.20 and, and 25.20, so as per the alerts, there's an opportunity there. Um, but because it's not a particularly big range down here, your entry is pretty critical, so that's why you certainly don't want to go chasing the, um, the open price on Monday if it dips down. Uh, and Westpac, very similar kind of pattern to uh, to the other two, so it's really only CBA that's been the one that's been overbought. So I'm a little undecided. Do you go with the stock that's the most overbought on the assumption that it's um, it's got the furthest to fall, or do you look at it from the point of view of CBA has been the strongest? There's a reason for that, and so you may be better off short selling the weaker banks. I'm not sure how that'll play out, and that's why I've given you several options uh, via the daily alerts. So that's it for this weekend. Um, the, I'm, I'm finding the markets really are playing out reasonably predictably. I expected to a correction in January. Um, I also expected that when that correction started that we would get an initial fall, which we saw in the Australian market and in the, in the X, uh, SO market. You then get a weak recovery because there's lots of people who don't believe the fact that the, um, the, the uh, upward momentum is over. Uh, and then when that peaks out, you then get a, a lower a lower peak uh, and a lower high, and then the market settles into a bit more of a downtrend. So I'm not seeing anything that suggests that it's not going to play out that way. 
uh, this time round. So uh, we've just got to play it day by day and uh, make the most of it. So that's all for now. Um, we'll uh, we'll talk again next weekend. Cheers.